Hello once again and welcome to Talking Technology. You are watching this live stream on our Facebook page, ZimDI TV. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Justin Mahlafla. Remember on this program, we take a look, a detailed look rather, uh, at technology and how it affects our daily lives, whether we are at home or at the workplace. And today we are going to look at assistive devices uh, in terms of addressing challenges that are faced with uh, by people living with a disability. It is. And today my guest is Samantha Sibanda. Samantha is a passion uh, for people living with disabilities. Samantha, welcome to Talking Technology. Thank you, Justin. Now, uh, before we go any further in uh, looking at this issue today, I'm going just to ask Samantha to introduce yourself. Uh, who is Samantha Spanda? Uh, okay, uh, as you have heard, my name is Samantha Spanda. Uh, so my organization, I'm a founder of the organization called Signs of Hope Trust. Signs of Hope. Yes, Signs of Hope Trust. Um, so we usually do awareness concerning persons with disabilities or concerning disability as a whole. Um, we raise awareness through having networking meetings with people and public meetings where we invite people and tell them or address concerning disability. And we also do advocate for the rights of persons with disabilities. Okay. So that's what I do. Um, yeah, I'm also part of the alumni of the Young African Leaders Initiative. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's basically yeah, I can say what who I am. <laughs> All right. So how did you get involved in the issues of people or persons with disabilities? Um, what happened was, you know, there are some things that you just come across when you're uh, living in life. And concerning disability, I know that most of the people have got this problem, that if it doesn't affect me, it's none, it's none of my business. I'm not going to be part of it. But well, when I was still uh, dancing, I used to be a dancer. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> so we went to Austria to dance. Okay. So I met this other lady who was also there on the panel and she was doing some lovely work on persons with disabilities. So she, she just asked this question. I don't know, maybe she doesn't even remember. Because she asked me and said, uh, so how, how do you guys do it in your country? What do you do about disability? Then she was dancing. She was on a wheelchair and she was dancing. Oh, and I'm okay. saying, okay. well, I've never thought about doing anything like that. So when I came back, that's when I started to do all the work concerning disability. So in the first year, I wanted to do something concerning the arts. But I saw that it's got no effect. There's nothing that's happening. I'm just going to those schools uh, doing maybe a few lessons or something. But it wasn't helping. And so I thought, yeah, persons with disabilities don't need to be in those schools. Maybe we should include them more in the society. So as I was growing as well, I, I started to do all this raising awareness and stuff instead of just now teaching. developing into a passion for you. Yes. This is what you do. Yes. Okay. Okay. How do you find it uh, so far? It's okay. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I meet these questions. You are not disabled, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> to understand thinking. how how does it work for you? Yeah, you don't have a disability, and you're yeah. giving out, uh, you're giving your life, you know, for those with uh, disabilities or various forms of disabilities. Yeah. How do you well, you know, them? you know, you know, disability is tricky because. Uh, as you get older, you also get disabled uh, somehow. Is that so? Yes, because um, like maybe when you're going to some buildings, you realize that there are no lifts. Okay. And yeah. you're already old and, and you, you can't... This go. weight on you and you yes. can't carry it anymore. Uh, yes. Okay. And then you just think, so well, you can't say... I think the Shona people say, Seka Urema Wafa, because you never know what will happen okay. to okay. you in your life as you live. Today, just today, yeah. you know, yeah. funny because I heard about an accident just today, this morning. Mm -hmm kids, I think they were from school or going somewhere, and then they were just involved in an accident. You know, it can happen anytime. Yeah, yeah. So with disability, you know, we can't judge or say, no, it doesn't affect me. Because one way or the other, you never know what is going to happen. And I really always tell people that, you know what, to start running around when you've been affected, you know, it's a disgrace. We should do something about it. Yeah, it's been long. We've been quiet. So yeah. Okay, okay. We also want to appreciate those of you who have joined uh, this live stream on our Facebook page, ZimDI TV. Whether you are watching us from Zimbabwe, or you are watching from South Africa, or you are in Namibia, you are in Malawi, Botswana, or you are in the United Kingdom, China, Japan, you are in New Zealand, Australia. We want to say thank you so much for being part of this uh, discussion. We are looking at assistive 
devices uh, in as far as meeting the challenges of uh, persons with disabilities is concerned. And today my guest Samantha Spanda is here to talk uh, about how best her organization and herself are trying to alleviate the challenges that people with disabilities are facing. Perhaps you know somebody with a disability or perhaps you have a disability yourself. Please keep watching this program. We believe that by the end of the program, uh, maybe something would have been said here yes. that will also show you that there is always a way. Yes. And uh, I believe with the technology that we have today, we really agree yes. that there is a way around the challenges Round, that yeah. people face. Now, um, with your organization, you have traveled the breadth and length of Zimbabwe. What, what kind of, or what major disabilities have you come across? I'll say, first of all, if we look at um, the survey that was done by UNICEF and other organizations pertaining disability, they were saying that most of the disabilities are acquired disabilities. Well, what does that mean? Which means that you are not born with it. So okay. most of the people who've got disabilities might not have been born with a disability. Mm -hmm. They get it. Uh, later on in life. Okay. So that is the first um, fact that I want us to know as Zimbabwe, that most of the disabilities that are uh, affecting people, they were not born with them. Yeah. So we've got many disabilities that we've come uh, across. Uh, there are other persons who are deaf. Uh, these cannot hear totally, but others are hard of hearing. Okay. Um, there are other people who are blind, or some would prefer um, visually impaired, okay. to say they are visually impaired, others would say they are blind, yes. Um, we've got cerebral palsy, polio, uh, we've got other learning disabilities such as dyslexia. Okay. Yeah, okay. many. Okay. Well, what, what exactly is that, dyslexia? Uh, dyslexia is actually a, a learning disability where the person cannot actually um, comprehend stuff, like comprehensions. Sometimes they confuse the letters. Okay. Sometimes if they're too close or too big or okay. too small, rather, they can't actually identify. It's just the problem with so identifying the words. Those conditions in Zimbabwe. Yes. Yes. They what, else, what else? What are the conditions? The muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. uh, well, other what people. Is that? Okay. So with muscular dystrophy, your your joints are becoming weak. Some some other people have got weak joints. Maybe birth and then as they grow older they become even weaker so yeah there are okay. such disabilities this is also what we need our audiences to do we have had these various conditions that Samantha is describing here we have uh, dyslexia we have muscular dystrophy and so many others and I believe uh, most of these conditions you know it appears they were not there before and we are beginning to learn and hear about them just recently. But perhaps you have somebody, a relative or a child with that condition, please uh, post on our page ZimDI TV how are you relating uh, with your loved ones who are living with those conditions? How do you interact with them? How are you assisting them? Or if they are going to school at all, how are they learning at school? How are they acquiring their education? How are they managing their day-to-day -day activities? Please send to us, let us know so that we can also be able to help someone out there. Now, uh, what kind of challenges do people or persons with disabilities face? Uh, the challenges that we have come across was also the challenge of accessing education. Uh, this was also, I'll keep on making reference to that survey because it's close to the statistics that we have in Zimbabwe. Uh, it was showing that persons with disabilities have got less education compared to their counterparts. So which means if, a child, if I've got a child with a disability, at six they might not yet be in school. So yeah, the accessing of the education is different. And also we've got other people who, who have a disability when they're in the job. They can't go back to work. They are not given any compensation. These are the challenges that are being faced. And other things, like for the women, if you are going to the maternity clinic, you know you are pregnant and you need help. What if you are deaf? Access to information is a problem. Such of these things. Even right now, um, like the radio, we see that maybe it's the biggest, it's got the greatest following in media, but someone who's deaf can't hear the radio. And so, which means that the access for, for, uh, to information is limited. So that's, those are the discrimination. discrimination in jobs in every way because sometimes someone just doesn't want to be served by someone who's got a disability. So that is a, <laughs> I don't even know how that happens, but it's there. Okay. It happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how do you then communicate, how do you interact with uh, people with 
disabilities when you are out there doing your work? I want to tell you something, Justin. It's normal. Okay. Because only for, for those who are blind or those who are visually impaired, they just need maybe to recognize your voice and you're already maybe in a conversation. They can talk on the phone. You can actually call them. You can actually do the WhatsApps and everything with, the, with the, a, a person with a visual impairment. So it's just normal. But maybe those with, um, uh, who are deaf, they would want you to communicate with sign language or, and stuff like this. Yeah. And some with other physical disabilities, you may also need another assistive technology to just bridge uh, the gap there. And that's exactly yeah. what we are going to be looking at. When we return from this break, remember you're watching Talking Technology today. The topic is assistive devices, you know, uh, meeting the needs of uh, persons living with uh, disabilities. And we do hope that you continue to watch the program and interact with us as well. Uh, when we return from the break, we'll be looking at your comments, your questions, or your, your opinions that you are going to be posting on our page, Zim DITV. Keep watching Zim DITV. We'll be back shortly. Uh, okay, we just have the simple G clamp, um, as many of us would know it. Uh, so you can just mount uh, wherever you can, whether it's on a desk or because you can adjust near, near this part. Uh, or you can even put it on your wheelchair if you've got a wheelchair. Um, then you can just move these around as well. Then you take your screwable side. Then we take this one, which is a barrel. Uh, it's the one that we're going to be using to navigate. Let me put it in there. Then we take the normal cables that we use for our phones. And there's the USB side and then there's a side. Then we just need to check if it's uh, going to be usable to you. Let's fix it. Put it to how you want. And then we're ready for our computer site. That one's the watermelon. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now you just saw that clip there that uh, uh, is showing a gadget that actually helps persons living with disabilities do quite a number of things with their own mobile phones or at the computer and things like that. Now we're going to uh, look at uh, in detail at how that gadget actually has helped uh, people in Zimbabwe or is expected to transform the lives of people uh, living with disabilities in Zimbabwe. Samantha, what, what, what do you call that gadget that you just saw on the screen? Uh, okay, we call it the flip mouse. Flip mouse. Yes. Okay. So it's called the flip mouse because you can actually use your fingers or maybe you can use your lips to navigate. It's a mouse, like we are saying. So it's got the function of a mouse. Okay. 
So whatever you by, do. By to mouse, it. please explain. People okay. will not understand <laughs> which kind of mouse are you talking okay. about? Okay. The mouse so that we, runs around uh, or the mouse that works on computers? Yes, the okay. computer mouse. Oh, okay. So it's so it's the the mouse is the one that we usually use to navigate your screen to select whatever option that you want to do on the screen so yes that's what it's used for so you realize that some other people who have got no movement maybe all here and everything so and they can't use uh the normal mouse that we use maybe with your fingers or even on your laptop you still need to use your fingers to navigate everything on the screen so yeah what the the device does is that it allows you to use your mouth to do whatever you want to do on the computer how do you do that so we, we saw somebody there you know that was you actually yes. doing that demonstration and you had that uh, pipe on your mouth yes how does it work Can so the pipe is used to sip and puff into the um any demonstration how do you sip and puff yes like just yes so it's just as you are doing that you're selecting the options that you want to do really so yeah if you are yeah you're, you're navigating while you're just moving like that mm -hmm. and then if you sip and puff you are making selections and then you can actually open whatever document that you want to open it can also be used on your phone to receive phones to access your whatsapp and to do all that you, stuff you are saying that gadget you can attach it as we saw mm -hmm. to it was attached to your desk yes. so that it is actually accessible mm -hmm. in this side of the mouth yes and then uh, you use it on a laptop you on can your actually laptop, type your desktop, your letters, you know, go through your emails, yes. yeah, you know, Google, yes. using your mouth. Yes. So if the person has got speech, maybe, you can also just put another application where you can just put so that the, the application can actually read the words that they're saying. So you can actually speak to your device and then it starts to type everything. If you've got so, speech, okay. yes, okay. so you can just use to select and then for the typing you just use your mouth your with mouth. the speech synthesizer that's, yes. that's fantastic that's yes. wonderful so <laughs> how, how how has this changed the lives of people uh, living with disabilities okay first the, the device was first uh, done in austria uh, it was created in austria to do a lot of uh, and it has helped people so the guys from austria are the ones who brought it to us the site and so for here we've just tried it uh, one in one or two places but yeah one it's or good two places for the from guy how many people, how many um, people? We have donated it to Jairo Studio in Bulawayo. <coughs> so I think that all the people who had the access to that uh, device could um, get help. And then we have also donated to Precious, uh, who was working for King George VI in Bulawayo. So, yeah, she can now access her phone, she can do everything. That, because before she would need someone to answer the phone calls, to do, yes, okay, okay, to okay. maybe when she's typing on WhatsApp, someone would be there. But another guy also who was using it in Austria is actually playing in a band. But he plays the organ. So before he had the disability, he couldn't play. Okay. So he was so now happy beautiful. that at least I can play music. So he's wow, actually in a wow. band. Using that gadget? Using the gadget. Wow, okay. So l let's look at how, how accessible has it been to Zimbabwe. So you have mentioned like three places or mm. three people mm. uh, okay, who have direct access to that gadget. How many of these do you have uh, in Zimbabwe? Right now, I can say we've got two because the other only one is two not, yes, only two. Mm. So sadly, yeah. But we want to take the project further and start to build the devices uh, locally. Well, what has been the challenge in, in acquiring many? Because I believe we don't have two people with disabilities mm. that require those cards. We've got many mm. of them. Well, what are the challenges? Well, most of the challenges stem from that we need funds to to make all these devices and second of all i think we also need to train people who can do that uh, how, many, actually, how many people do you have right now who can be you know who can train persons living with disabilities to use this this technology for training actually we don't have also so we want to uh, begin all this work right now okay First, to train the technicians who are going to actually make the device. It's quite easy to make. I made oh, one myself. Oh, you actually made this? Yes. You made one yourself? Yes. By yourself? Yes. Oh, congratulations. Yes, That's thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. There yeah. you are. Okay, we already have a technician here. Mm. She has made the, you said it's called the flip, flip mouse. mouse. So yes. you made your own flip mouse? I've made my own. Okay. It was quite easy. I, I think it was only soldering. I actually, I'm not actually good in soldering, but 
Yeah, I could do it. I could do it. I could solve that. I could put the machine together myself. Okay. Okay. So there's a construction manual that you can use. All right. It's All quite right. easy. And the actually. raw materials are accessible. They are here. Uh, the raw materials we can get. Yeah, in okay. Zimbabwe. Only the casing is the problem, because the casing. Uh, yeah, we needed. But you um, can always go around that. Yeah, we can. Well. Yeah, with the help of other people who can. Um, so what? What else are you looking at in terms of you meeting the requirements that you have in terms of, uh, you know generating as many of these products as you can? Well, that's that. Only if we get the funds just to bring, because we can get a, uh, a do-it-yourself kit, mm -hmm. um, we can get the parts already full, and then all we have to do is to assemble. Okay. Or we can start with the cutting, everything. But that would actually need maybe a 3D printer or something. So then we'd get, and the 3D printer maybe it's going around Wow, two thousand dollars there about. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And that's a once off. Yeah. Many, many, many yes. but maybe you're out there, you're watching the program and would like to partner uh, you know, her organization that is trying to make these gadgets available to people uh, living with disabilities in Zimbabwe. Please do get in touch with us here at Zimbabwe TV, or you can get in touch with Samantha and uh, you know, give as much assistance as you can. I believe this gadget is actually, uh, you know, it's, it's made to transform so many lives and uh, to also make better the challenges that people are facing uh, as they live with uh, disabilities now. How long does it take for just one person to master this gadget? It's, it's not a difficult thing. It's not difficult. Because you can actually change the settings to the speed that you want, to whatever. It's, it's actually very, very easy. For the first person, with pressures, she just took a couple of minutes because she already knew what a phone is and oh, she can right. navigate okay. everything. Okay. So it just took her just a couple Basically, of minutes. Basically, this is uh, to, it, it works with your phone, your laptop, your, your laptop. tablet, your iPad, mm. anything. Mm. Okay. No, iPad it doesn't because it doesn't. yeah, yeah, it's only suitable for Android devices and because Android is um, the oh. the okay. iOS is quite um, challenging it to is get. A yeah, software. yes. Okay. So right. yeah, so we don't use it for it iPhone. Works with Android gadgets. Yes, Android does. Yeah. Okay, okay, and so if if you give it to somebody, are they able to assemble it? by themselves or they will also need somebody maybe within the home setup to help them to put it out to, to set it up so that they can use it on their machines or their phones or laptops yeah also it's not a very difficult thing to set it up once you you put it in you just set it up on the like install the the software yeah and then software, when you, exactly so when you just hardware. yes so when you install the software that uses uh that can pick up the device and do everything. When you, you install it, you're just good to go. So with Windows 10 and Windows 8, it's just automatic. So all you have to do is just to insert and you're done. Wow, okay, yeah. that's beautiful. We are going to take another break. When we come back, we'll look more at this uh, device that is called the flip mouse and how it is uh, expected to transform the lives of persons with disabilities, not only in Zimbabwe, I believe, even across uh, the continent or wherever uh, we find uh, people living with disabilities. Keep watching Zimbi TV. Many of us would know it, uh, so you can just mount uh, wherever you can, whether it's on a desk or because you can adjust ne ne this part, uh, or you can even put it on your wheelchair if you've got a wheelchair. Just move these around as well. Then you take your screwable side. You put it and 
then take this one which is a barrel uh, it's the one that we're going to be using to navigate let me put it in there then we take the normal cables that we use for our phones and there's the USB side and then there's this side to check if it's uh, going to be usable to you. Let's fix it to put it to how we want. And then we're ready for our computer site. That one's the watermelon. Watching Talking Technology, and this is the third and final segment of the program. I still have Samantha Sbanda. We are discussing assistive uh, devices in uh, accessing education or in learning or in any other uh, uses that we may think of in regards uh, to people living with uh, disabilities. Samantha, uh, we, we also just showed that gadget uh, to our viewers, and I believe uh, this is like a game changer. I just want to ask you, you said at the beginning that you are also doing awareness work. You know, trying to also uh, make people aware of the needs and requirements of persons living with disabilities. But have you also made uh, aware stakeholders or people that look after these uh, people about this technology? Do they know that there is something that can make their uh, conditions better? Yeah, we, we have tried. Yeah, even as I'm speaking to you right now, I'm trying. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. So yeah, we've we've been around. We've been quite around for a while, mm -hmm. but we've got other charity organizations who who have come on board, like mm -hmm. Miracle Missions Trust. They've come on board to want to help okay. to get this device also built okay. or made in this country. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've been trying to mm -hmm. get around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I believe if NIF. You, you did so much in terms of trying to create awareness. There will still be some challenges, some limitations with regards to accessing the technology that is required for persons living with disabilities. And in Zimbabwe, I believe we've had a history of, you know, the, these challenges to do with, you know, acquiring the gadgets from outside the country, if they are coming from outside, you know, funding, what is what exactly is, is the problem? Are you getting enough support from the government or from stakeholders, from the ministry? Where, where are the challenges coming from? Uh, we would really require more support, even, yeah, especially in terms of bringing the things duty free. Yes, we understand that we want to foster that. Um, independence on ourselves on our own country but some things are not yet available and would really love it if it was going to be a free duty free or something but are you saying to to bring this in you actually pay duty yes we are required to pay duty for for that yeah, um, it's a challenge. yeah it's a challenge, it's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah it's really difficult mm -hmm. we would really love that the the duty maybe can be wavered or something that would really be good support for and such devices. I know of a friend who was also dealing with the machines for persons who are blind mm -hmm. and br the braille machines, they had to leave them at the clearing offices because they were not allowed to come in. Wow. So they needed to pay the duty. So yeah, it's quite a challenge, the duty thing. Yeah, it is indeed. Mm. Uh, I believe maybe if, if you were to 
blow to uh, focus on making them here yourselves mm. as an organization that will also be cheaper it would be it would be great because we are giving in the plan we're saying if we start to make this one device we can actually give people like to open the minds of people to start thinking oh so this is possible what are the things because you know what the challenge of disability is it's 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 a lot because the the, the disabilities are various even if you say somebody has got made, made The needs are, that's why we call them the special needs, because it may be only, they vary with, they individuals. Vary with individuals, yeah. Wow. Okay, so if you were to, to get a partner today, what would you want them to do? Okay. <laughs> partners, first, potential partners, mm, this is for you? Mm. So first of all, we need more, because we're actually planning to do a mobile resource unit. So we're going to start in Bulawayo. So what we need to do is to just have a few, maybe laptops or tablets that we can use. Because, you, you know, if we are taking the mobile initiative, we can use those 10, 10 or 15 computers or tablets to reach out to hundreds of people. Because maybe today we're here, tomorrow we're in another location. Still